Hello and what is going on everyone? Hope you're doing well. It's Duoscape here and today I have an AFK Hellweird guide to get you over 37 kills an hour completely AFK. Once again, this has been from the guy that Theory crafted all of the Gregorovich methods that you know. Big shout out to Frank. His link will be down in the description down below and the link to his PVME written guide will also be down there. For those of you that want to cut out the middleman and go check out the guide from his perspective, he has a really short and concise straight to the point guide on his channel for this boss showing you exactly what you need to do. So if you guys would rather watch the condensed form of this, go check that out, show him some love and give him some support. So in terms of the requirements, you're going to want 73 summoning and have unlocked ancient summoning. The reason that you want this is so that you can use the Blood Reaver Familiar, which we'll talk about later on in the video. But for those of you that have been living under a rock, we're going to be manipulating weapon poison damage here to be able to do a massive amount of damage output onto the boss. You're going to want to make sure you have the City of Centerstone quest because the new spells that come with that are what make this possible. I'm going to recommend 96 plus Herb Lore so that you have overloads unlocked, but I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I would recommend that you have at least Supreme Overloads or Elder Overloads for this. You can boost to get them using Pulse Cores, and to be perfectly honest with you, the faster you can get your Elder Overloads, the better. A lot of people don't like spending the money on them, but they will increase the amount of PVM efficiency and boss kills an hour that you can get. I'm also going to recommend 90 plus combat stats, but once again, it's very easy to get your combat stats up in this game. You can get well over 1 million XP an hour. So if you haven't already maxed out your combat stats, I'd recommend doing that before doing most PVM in the game. And then finally, 95 plus prayer, so that you have access to soul split and you have access to the damaging prayers. Obviously, best in slot is going to be the tier 99 damage in prayers, but the regular ones do suffice and they do work perfectly fine. Now that we've covered the requirements, let's actually take a look at the gear loadout that I'd recommend using for this method. First and foremost, the most important thing that synergizes with the new magic spells, you're going to need magic tank armor. Do not use magic damage in armor because it will make one of the spells redundant, and the whole reason that we're able to do this now is because the new spell allows you to mitigate a ton of damage that you receive, but you need to wear magic armor for it to work. I'm personally using regular primeval helm and boots which you can get by using techie at the raid shop you can use acto if you have it acto will technically be best in slot however i'm aware that not everyone has acto and for those of you that are firing your porch you can do what i've done and use superior sea singers row bottoms and rope top and you can augment these and put some perks on that we're going to cover later if you don't have these it's fine to just use regular sea singers that you can buy on the grand exchange the second slot that we're going to be covering is an essence of finality this is going to be the best in slot necklace that you can wear yes it does have a bit of a hefty upkeep with about 500k gp an hour to use the thing is with using this amulet it allows you to get higher soul split heals making the method more safer and it also increases your hit chance by three percent when you get them reaper stacks which is very important for this method to make sure that your debilitate don't splash of course if you don't have this you can use an amulet of souls if you want to go down the safer route or you can use a reaper necklace to ensure that you have a higher hit chance but an essence of finale is going to be the best in slot necklace for this method in terms of the weapon that I'd recommend for this, I wouldn't recommend going any lower than a tier 88 mage weapon. So you can use the superior serial staff if you have it. You can use the noxious staff. But best in slot is going to be an inquisitor staff here as you benefit from tier 97 magic damage on the boss. The ring slot doesn't matter too much, but best in slot is going to be a reaver's ring. While that might be quite pricey and most people have a ring of death, you can just put that on if you have it. An asylum surgeon ring and luck of the dwarves also work fine. The ring slot is not going to make or break the method whatsoever, so use whatever you have realistically. Glove slot is very important. You're going to want to make sure you have cinderbane gloves. We're really focusing on manipulating weapon poison damage here, so make sure you've got these. And the book of balance works in accordance to that as well. Uh, for those of you unaware, the illuminated book of balance has a special attack which when it procs, it deals five hit splats to the opponent. These hit splats don't deal the biggest amount of damage on their own to the boss, but each one of them hit splats actually has a chance to proc weapon poison damage. So that's why you use an illuminated book of balance over any other pocket slot item here. It's also relatively cheap to use. And then in our seventh slot, we have a rune pouch. I will cover all of the runes that you need to bring for this method later on. There's a lot of items to cover in the inventory, so let's go through these quickly. First up, you're going to want your overloads stroke stat boosting potions. Of course, I'm going to recommend using elder overloads, but if you have supremes, you can try them and regular overloads will work, but you're going to have lower hit chance. You're going to be doing less damage and you're going to be taking more damage. So overall, it will be a lot less safer if you use them. Super prayer renewals to upkeep your prayer points and make it so that you need to drink less super restores. Weapon poison plus 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 is a must have. And for one hour, you need one six dose flask. If you don't want to spend the extra money on a flash, just buy two four dose potions. But you may have trouble juggling the amount of inventory space that you have. In terms of super restores, if you have the tier 99 prayer, 
using soul split alongside it you're going to need 10 of them to upkeep your prayer points if you do not have the tier 99 prayer and you're using the tier 95 prayer you can get away with bringing eight of these so bring however many that you have according to your setup for the five and six slots we have our lantadime and quorum incense sticks these make it so that our overload timers last longer and all of our potion timers last longer and the quorum incense sticks increases the amount of weapon poison that our weapon poison and cinderbane gloves actually do to the boss so both of these are very important you want to right click and overload these and then use all of the rest of them to get the effects for one hour you need in total 11 of each of these to do that for slots number seven and eight you're going to want to make sure you have an ancient elven ritual shard and enhanced excalibur these aren't really needed but if you look at your screen and you're a little bit low health Use your enhanced Excalibur, and then every time that you look over at your screen to pick up loot and whatnot, if you can use your Ancient Elven Ritual Shard, you may as well to save money on them super restores. Potion Reservoirs are really nice for this method because they actually let it so that you can AFK even more. I'm going to recommend only bringing the Potion Reservoirs if you have Elder Overload Salves or Overload Salves, purely due to the fact that if you don't, you're still going to have to click the other potions. So if you have Overload Salves, make sure you bring some Potion Reservoirs, and this will literally be so AFK. Uh, you're also going to want to make sure you bring a Blood Reaver Familiar. You can use a Ripper Demon Familiar, but I'm going to advise using the method that I'm going to go in this guide and talk about and use a Blood Reaver Familiar to really manipulate that weapon poison damage. To quickly explain what it does, every single time that you heal, deals a hit splat from the Blood Reaver to the boss. Every one of these hit splats has a chance to proc weapon poison damage. And you can really manipulate this by having Soul Split, Vampirism Aura, Vamp Scrims, Blood Spells with Magic. All of these things in accordance together will boost the amount of damage that your Blood Reaver is actually able to do. And then you're also going to want your rune pouch that's in your equipment slot and a few more runes in your inventory. Now let's take a look at the revolution bar and some other items that you need to make this method work. This revolution bar is subject to change and any changes that are made to it will actually be in the PVME written guide from Frank himself. If you divert away from the bar that he has in the PVME, you will most likely get less kills an hour as he's already made it optimized for the method. So please be aware of that. It may, if you change the bar, you may have less chance of surviving. You may die more often. And overall, you will probably get less kills an hour. So now that we've covered the bar, let's actually look at the other useful things that you need for this method. A Vampirism Aura is, in my opinion, a must-have. Extend it. Every single two hours that you actually do with an extended Vamp Aura, you will gain 2,000 marks of war, which you can buy a tier 2 aura reset from War himself at War's Retreat. And then you can reset this and do this infinitely. Persistent Rage is a must-have for this specific method. These things are not just said for fun. These are required for the method. If you do not have Persistent Rage, it will not work. You need this for the method to work. Death Ward is very nice for anything like this, in my opinion. Not everyone would advise you to use it, but it will increase your survivability when killing bosses like this and AFK. So I'd recommend getting a Death Ward Relic. If you find that you're taking too much damage, try it out for yourself and it may fix your problems. Berserker's Fury as well. You don't have to use this relic, but it will increase the overall amount of damage that you're able to deal. If you don't want to put this on, put Fury of the Small. Any other relic really will work. The Luck of the Doors relic, but I'd recommend using a Berserker's Fury relic, and that's what I've done my testing with. And then let's actually take a look at the spells that you're going to be using. You have the choice between Blood Blitz, Exanguinate, and Insight Fear. Exanguinate and Insight Fear will, will be relatively more expensive than using Blood Blitz. However, please be aware that Blood Blitz has the chance to heal you, making it even more safe. And the difference between all three of these is actually very minute. So between the three of these, I'd recommend going to Blood Blitz. Obviously, your rune pouch setup is going to change depending on what spell you use. So bring the runes that you need for the spell that you're going to be trying out. Just try them out for yourselves. See which one you're able to get more kills an hour with. See which one you feel more safer using and use that one. But I'm going to recommend using Blood Blitz. And then an absolute must have is the runes for the animate dead spell Earth blood death and soul runes so down below in my rune pouch i have soul runes death runes blood runes and then in my inventory i have earth and fire runes all of these runes can be used to use blood blitz and animate dead and that's what i'd recommend using for this method so the method itself is actually very simple you want to actually come into the boss arena and make sure you stand one square west of this mushroom it's very important that you stand here this way you won't be moved by Hellweir and you're not going to get bombarded by the mushroom clouds. And then make sure you have activated your spell. I personally have my keybind set to 1 for the animate dead spell and you're going to need to activate this every 12 minutes. And I have my super restore potions to my number 2 keybind. And then anytime I see that my prayer points are low, I press the 2 keybind and anytime that my 
animate dead spell is actually about to run out i'll use that as well you can set timers using alt one if you want for this i personally don't but you can do that and then the method's really simple you literally stand here with the bar that frank's provided and you just afk that's pretty much it as far as it goes for afk and hell we like i said frank has a really short and concise guide he has a written guide all of that will be in the description down below for you guys to check out make sure you don't let your prayer points drop make sure you don't let your overloads run out all of these things will result in you dying if you don't keep on top of it most importantly if your animate dead spell runs out after 12 minutes and you don't reactivate it, you'll simply take too much damage and will die. And that's pretty much it. I'm not going to cover how much money you can make an hour doing this because the amount of people coming on board to AFK this boss is going to really crash the price of pretty much everything. Lanta Dimes are going to go down. The Cyro Wonder Orb is going to go down. And so is the Seren Armor set. The thing is, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. It makes it so that all of the components in the game from God Wars Dungeon 2 are just going to be even cheaper for players to get. People are going to be able to get their aftershocks cheaper. People are going to get their planted feet, caromans cheaper, all of that fun stuff. So while some of you may be annoyed that the amount of money that you can make an hour at these bosses is less, it is actually for the greater good of the economy in RuneScape, in my opinion. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you found it useful, feel free to drop a like on the channel. Don't forget to head over to PVME and read the written guide. It's got everything in there that you need to know and it can explain it 10 times better than I can. Just take your time to go over there and learn it. If you're having any issues with the method, you can join my community discord and ask away any questions. There's a load of people in there doing the method that I'm sure are happy to help you guys if you've got any problems to help find out what is preventing you from doing any of the AFK methods that I have on the channel. Consider subscribing if you don't want to miss out on any future guides or series that we have on the channel. We've got loads of content to come. I've got so many guides that I want to make. It's just finding the time to actually do them. And that's it. Best of luck AFK and some hell weird. It really is amazing that this is now a possibility for us to do. And at some point in the future, I may make an AFK Vindictor guide. Frank actually already has one of them on YouTube. So go check that out now if you want to AFK some Vindictor as well. Thank you all for watching.